Hey guys, Matt here. Gonna do a couple verses today from Hebrews 6 and then we'll probably finish tomorrow. Uh, this is getting good now. We're, we're gonna get into some little bit deeper water here with Hebrews. Uh, the, the author wanted to show them that Jesus was more than the prophets, chapter 1, more than the angels, chapter 2, more than Moses, chapter 3, enter God's rest, chapter 3 and 4, chapter 5, he deals with this new topic of Jesus being a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And he wants to get into it, but these guys are still drinking milk. So in, in chapter 6, he comes out and it says, Leave these elementary doctrines. Uh, and then he, he names those elementary doctrines. And then he switches in, in 4 through 8 and he says, And here's what happens if you don't leave these elementary doctrines. And it's it talks about a very disturbing passage about... It makes it look like you can lose your salvation. It's a controversial verse for some people, but it's just it's just a stern warning. And he switches in this fourth or eight to the impersonal. He says, don't be like these people here, you guys. Don't be like them. And then he switches back in verse 9 to the personal. He says, though we speak in this way, though I'm giving you this terrifying warning, yet in your case, he's, he's being the big brother here, he's picking him up, beloved calls him beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that lead to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work of love, the, your work and the love you have shown for his name in serving the saints, as you still do. He's pumping them up, telling them they're still doing the stuff, they're still doing the work. Keep going. Verse 11, And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness and to have the full assurance of hope until the end. Don't lose your salvation, basically what he's saying here. So that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. So he's just he's just trying to kick him in the pants and say, guys, grow up, get off the milk, and here, I'm going to give you somebody to imitate, okay? And it's somebody that you all know, because you guys have two, two of the greatest prophets um, that you guys look up to, that the whole world looks up to, any Christian, are Moses and, and Abraham, other than Jesus, of course. Moses and Abraham. So, being being uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he, he picks Abraham because he knows he's going to get their attention. And Abraham was a great man of faith, the father of our faith. So he says in verse 13, For when God made a promise to Abraham... Since he had no one greater by whom to swear, of course he is God, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus, because of this, because of God's promise, because of what God spoke to Abraham, because of this, Abraham, having patiently waited, having patiently waited, having patiently, not losing his patience, waiting patiently on God, what did he do? He obtained the promise. This is huge, and he gives us a huge role model here in Abraham. And there's two things. Right away, I thought of, uh, I thought of Romans 5, which is just a restatement of Genesis, uh, probably 12 or, or something like that, where maybe it's even earlier than that, where, where uh, God promises Abraham a son. I love how it's spoken. It's restated in Romans 5. Let's start in uh, 18. In hope, Abraham, in hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations, because God said it, as he had been told, so shall your offspring be. Check this out. He, this is Abraham, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead. He was 100 years old. And his wife's body, I'm paraphrasing, and Sarah's Sarah's barren womb. So here's here's Abraham, 100 years old, as good as dead. Here's Sarah, a barren womb, an old woman with a barren womb, have ne never bore children, but no distrust made him waver concerning the promises of God. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Wow. There's a role model. There's a man that we're called to imitate. 
He grew strong as he gave glory to God. He grew strong. He, his faith didn't waver. He grew stronger. His faith didn't weaken. It grew stronger as he gave glory to God. That's amazing. And uh, one more that's, that's huge. I, I love this story. Let's go to uh, Genesis. I should have had this marked. I think it's Genesis 22. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Genesis 7. 22. Let's see. I'm getting all confused. Okay, Genesis 22. Um, Abraham, God tells Abraham to, to, to uh, sacrifice his son, Isaac. And so they get to this place that God told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood down and just got ready to slaughter Isaac. And, and the angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on him. God has seen you and I know that you fear me. And so here's what happens. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, your only son, sound familiar? I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gates of his enemy, and in your offspring shall all nations on earth be blessed. So, God was uh, building Abraham's faith, right? Uh, God gave Abraham this test to sacrifice his own son. Hmm. Obviously a foreshadowing of, of God sacrificing his own son once and for all. The high priest, our high priest, who is a priest in the order of Melchizedek, a king and a priest forever. But here we see Abraham not wavering. God said it, and he did it. Abraham followed through. And what did God do in the process? Well, he provided him a ram. Behold, there was a ram with his horn stuck in the, in the thicket. God provided the ram. God provided the sacrifice, and God provided the sacrifice for us in Jesus we got to press on. we got to keep pressing on. The Hebrew church is being warned to keep pressing on. Lay hold of that faith. And that's what we're, we're being exhorted to do right now. Um, and we're given an example, given a role model here. And, and by the way, God, when God was testing Abraham, I don't think God was testing and, just, and God was sitting up in heaven saying, mm, I wonder what my boy Abraham is going to do. No, God's sovereign. God knew what Abraham was going to do. The test was for Abraham. The test was to show Abraham that he did have the faith. And by the way, that faith is a gift. It's amazing, right? So God was showing Abraham that he had the faith to carry through what God had commanded. God was building up a nation in Abraham. It's amazing. All right. Good stuff. You got to love it. You got to love it. God is so complete. He's so thorough. The Old Testament and the New Testament tie in perfectly, and it's all about Jesus, the high priest. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, go serve your king. If you don't know Jesus, get on your knees and ask him to reveal himself to you. Ask him to save you. Do it today. Today is the day of salvation. And if you do, keep pressing on. Don't get off the milk. We all got to get off the milk and keep pressing on. All right. Have a good day. Peace.